Okay, the first thing I want to do is to apologize to every one of you, because my mission today is to spoil your day. I actually want to tell you what advanced glycation end products are and how they are a deadly, I mean deadly, consequence of the lives that you lead. Hands up, all of you had heard of advanced glycation end products before this talk. That's practically nobody. That's exactly what I think should change. So ages are actually a prime example of what you don't know can kill you. As you sit there, listen to me talk right now, ages are accumulating in your bodies, irreversibly damaging all your tissues and all your organs. Even though we don't know what ages are, we've never heard of them, we come into contact with them every day. They are part of our everyday lives. They are part of the foods we eat. Ages essentially drive the aging process. If you have high ages in your body, you will grow older quicker. Now, ages are a consequence of both waste and taste. In the body, they are produced as a waste product during normal metabolism. This we cannot prevent. This is part of our normal biology. These ages accumulate in our tissues and organs. We can't stop it. However, because of the Western lifestyle, we are now consuming large amounts of these ages through the foods that we eat. One thing about ages is they taste absolutely fantastic. The charred areas, the caramelized areas of the foods that we love are jam-packed full of ages, and that's why they taste so good. Food companies actually throw ages directly into processed foods, such as TV dinners, because originally they don't taste of anything. So they put the ages in to improve both their taste and their appearance. Now, what actually is an age? Ages are actually produced in a number of different ways. But one of the most common is when sugar comes into contact with protein, there's a spontaneous rearrangement, and they actually produce ages. This all happens in the body. The same thing happens when sugar comes into contact with fats. The same thing happens when sugar comes into your DNA. So you can see straight away, all our lifestyle are increasing these ages in the body, and that can't be a good thing. Now here's one for the women. Now one of the prime examples of the damage that ages can do is actually wrinkles in the skin. Ages can bind to the proteins that are in the skin. This dries the skin out, and this actually promotes wrinkles. If you imagine the same thing happening to all of your organs and all of the tissues in your body, that's one of the things ages can do to you. However, it's not the only thing. Ages promote inflammation in your joints and in your organs. They can mutate your DNA. They can even alter the way the cells in your body work. And that is why ages are actually associated with every chronic disease. And they're also associated with the four biggest killers, heart disease, diabetes, Alzheimer's, and cancer. Diabetics all have high age levels, and this leads to disease complications such as heart disease, amputations, and even death. Ages bind to your blood vessels, blocking the flow of blood. This leads to heart disease. It has been shown that there are large amounts of ages in the brains of Alzheimer's patients. My own research in the lab has shown that ages can actually make tumors grow quicker and may affect any chemotherapy a cancer patient is actually receiving. So you can see, lifestyle increases ages, ages promote aging, this leads to chronic diseases. Now 15,000, 15,000 is the recommended daily limit of ages that we should be exposing our bodies to. At first sight, this sounds like a large number, However, I'm going to show you now, it is very difficult to keep to that 15,000 limit. I'm going to show you a series of foods that we use every day and give you the age limits. These are all for three ounce portions. Bear that in mind. So we all know fruit and vegetables are healthy for us and they're very low in ages. They have less than 50 age units in three ounces. Now we all know that the fast foods are bad for us, the chicken nuggets and the burgers. They're very high in ages. Straight away, three ounces of a burger has 7,800 age units. Processed foods are full of ages. Processed cheese has around 8,700. 
Breakfast bars are very healthy if you look at the calories on them, but the ages are relatively high. It's around 2,000. Tofu, another one of them foods that's actually considered to be healthy, they have around 6,000 age units in it. Some other examples, butter has 26,000 age units in three ounces. Margarine has 7,000. Peanut butter has 7,000. You can see straight away that it's very, very difficult to keep to that 15,000 limit because of the Western lifestyle and the Western diet that we use. Now, unfortunately, that's not the end of it. The way we cook our foods also increases the age within that food. I've got an example, raw chicken, three ounces of raw chicken has around 800 age units. You use the moist heat to cook that food, such as boiling and poaching, that goes to 1,000. You use a dry, high heat, that goes straight to 8,000 units. That's just in the way we cook our foods. Now, at the start of this talk, I apologized. I said I was going to spoil your day. If I haven't started to do that already, the next slide's a doozy. So most people like bacon, yeah? Have you ever thought of why it tastes so good? Three ounces of bacon is about two to three slices. You fry that in no oil for five minutes, 90,000 age units. 90,000 age units is six times the recommended daily limit that we should be exposing our bodies to. I gave one for the women earlier, here's one for the men. Ages are associated with erectile dysfunction. Think about that the next time you're eating your BLT or your bacon double cheeseburger. And now seems a good time to point out that an age has two. So you can see what I'm saying there. We have to think about what we're eating. So how do we reduce ages? How do we stay younger? Well, unfortunately, there are no official guidelines from people like the World Health Organization or the Food and Drug Administration, which I find shocking given the information that I've given you. It is also impossible to actually um, reverse the ages that are already formed in your body. We don't know how to reverse them. We're actually trying to look at how to do it, but up to now we've had no luck. You can only reduce the ages that you're going to be exposed to in the future. So here's some tips on what we can do. Basically, we need to know how many ages are in the foods that we eat each day. Obviously, we need to know that so we can control them. There is a database online that lists around 500 foods. That is the only resources available at this time. Also, we need to stop overeating. I told you that sugars, DNA, and fats in the body actually lead to age formation. So if you're overeating, you're going to have this stuff lying around in your bodies. It's going to form ages. You can also think about the way we cook our foods. I told you the moist heats are great. So crock pots, steamers, all that kind of food is great. Frying is a no-no. You can actually cook your foods in smaller pieces, which means it cooks quicker, so there's less ages. Interestingly enough, acidic marinades actually inhibit the formation of ages during cooking. So lemon juice and vinegar, they're great things for actually reducing the ages that you do as you cook your foods. And finally, we should exercise regularly. Exercise reduces those fats, those sugars and their proteins that lead to ages forming in the body. So I have a final thought. Are we harming our children? I have five-year-old twins. I might look a bit old for that, but maybe I've eaten too many ages. I don't know. <laughs> Research indicates that our children are going to suffer a greater burden of chronic diseases than we will. They think this will mean that our children will not live as long as we do. I find that a frightening prospect. I believe that the ages in our children are accumulating at a faster and faster rate than ever before. I believe that this is contributing to the epidemic rise we see in adolescent diabetes. I think it also contributes to the fact that we are diagnosing cancer, Alzheimer's, and even heart disease in younger and younger people. So the next time that you make a meal for your family, or even every time you make a meal for your family, I would like you to think about this talk. I'd like you to think about the ages that you're putting into your foods. It may have a profound effect on your own health and your children's health. Once again, if I have spoiled your day, I'd like to apologize, especially the bit about the bacon that always makes me unpopular. But I sincerely believe that we should know what advanced glycation end products are and how they affect our lives and how they affect 
our overall health. I hope now, after this talk, you feel the same way too. Thank you.